Hello there third year students and the College of Arts Department of English. Today we are going to talk about the structure of our poem Epistle to Miss Blount by Alexander Pope. The structure of a poem simply means the way the poet has developed his theme, how he has divided the poem, how he has moved gradually from one part to another to raise the effect of the poem to its climax and then to an end. The division of the poem follows the traditional division of the epistle. As we said that this poem is written in the epistolary form, that is, it is written as a letter. So it follows the traditional division of the epistle that became an art in the 18th century. The division of the epistle has certain methods of development. The letter of the epistle or this poem starts with an introductory part, that is the introduction, then the poet moves gradually to the details of the situation that he speaks about. The end of the epistle is a conclusion which sums up the main purpose behind writing the poem. Thus we have here introduction, the main situation. The main situation may extend to more than one part or paragraph in the poem. And finally we have the conclusion. In this poem, we have five paragraphs or five divisions. The first one is the introduction, that is the return of a young girl from the city to her countryside. Then we have the second, the third and the fourth paragraphs or parts in the poem. Talk about the main situation in the poem. The second paragraph talks about her monotonous life in the countryside, while the third one is dedicated to the squire. The fourth one presents her fancies, her imaginations, and the fifth part is the conclusion. Thus, we have introduction, we have the thir second, third and fourth parts in the poem talking about the girl and her life in the countryside, while the fifth paragraph is the conclusion that shows the main purpose behind writing the poem. The first division or the first part in the poem. As we said, this poem, Epistle to Miss Blount, follows the structural division of the epistle. It starts with an introduction. This is the introduction of the poem, in which the poet presents and expresses the case of Miss Blount briefly. That is her departure uh, of a, from the town or to the countryside, from the city to the countryside. And the mental and emotional state in which she left the town to her village. The second division or part in the poem is the demonstration of the problem. That is the illustration, the presentation of the problem. Here in the poem, the poet gives us the details about the dull routine which the girl follows in her native village. All the daily activities are given in details. The poet follows the details of her daily activities from the early morning till night. He expresses her activities, including the morning walks, which is a habit that the villagers practice every day. Later, at about 9 o'clock, the girl spends her time reading. She may read for one hour. Then she has the time for drinking either tea or coffee. 
These activities continued till the middle of the day. The midday is the dinner time. In the afternoon, there is no real activity except sitting near the fire in a room, meditating or brooding on her life. At seven o'clock, she and some other girls used to go upstairs to a special room. That room is made for worship. They fast and pray for some hours. The time of worship could stand from seven o'clock till ten o'clock. Then they have their supper. All these daily activities are given in the second part of the poem, one by one, with the, with the exact time for each practice. This part is really significant. It uh, shows the poet's attitude to village life which he saw as very inactive that is uh, very inoperative static uh, and monotonous that is uh, repetitive because she repeats these uh, activities every day so her life is really monotonous and according to alexander pope it is inoperative inactive or static okay So, in an attempt to provide some delight, that is, some enjoyment, some pleasure in his own poem, and uh, also in the life of the girl herself, the poet inserts a third paragraph in which he presents a love affair between the girl and the squire. The squire, as we said, the landlord or the landowner in the countryside. Here the poem becomes rather funny because of the way the sequoia shows his love to the girl. Uh, from the beginning, the relationship between the two gives uh, the impression, of, the impression sorry, of having pleasure. The girl finds delight in torturing him. She takes him only as a plaything by which she might add some flavor to her stagnant life. Stagnant means, as we said, uh, inactive, monotonous, static. Okay. He himself uh, loves her, but he loves her among uh, other parts or as part of so many things. These things like his love for card games, his love for toast and sack. Toast means grilled bread or toasted bread. And the sack that is uh, put in a container or reserve. Uh, and his love for hunting. His love for his dog. His love for his horse. Even he values his things more than hair. So there is no real love relationship between the two. And here the squire is presented as a good example of the rough country fool or the rough country people. Then we have the fourth division or the fourth part in the poem in which the poet shows how um, the girl really spent her night before sleeping for her fancy is the only way to find the pleasure fancy means imagination dreams daydreams it is her outlet for the hidden or the unfulfilled desires she has unfulfilled desires as a young girl she is in need of love she needs to love others and to be loved by others but the country life cannot provide a fulfillment of such natural desire why because all the limitation and the restriction of the country life thus the only way to find some entertainment to find some compensation enjoyment 
is a through resorting to fancy, resorting to imagination, to dreams. The girl spends her night lying on the bed, imagining herself being desired by so many men and imagine all these men as important, wealthy, and powerful, such as knights, kings, dukes, lords, all of them are very influential people in the countryside. However, like all dreams and like all imaginations, they vanish. They disappear very quickly and one is awakened to what? One is awakened to reality. The reality of what? Of her monotonous life, of her dull life. In the fifth part of the poem, we have the conclusion, as we said. It's brief, but it shows the poet's feeling uh, toward that girl. Clearly, he cannot rid her from his mind easily. She lies in his mind. That is why he can see her, uh, whether he is uh, standing in the street or when he is reading or studying. Uh, so this is a kind or uh, absent-mindedness. Absent-mindedness is a symptom of love. Uh, the poem then ended stating the purpose of writing the poem. The, what is the purpose of writing the poem? That is his love for this girl. But this love is uh, written in a very brief paragraph uh, because, as we said, that uh, those poets, uh, the new classical poets, uh, are not poets of... Uh, emotions they don't try about their private feelings or emotions uh, so uh, this part is very brief very short and even he shows love as a kind of a slavery because the, the this part starts with so when you're slave so he shows love as a kind of a slavery uh, the poem then ended stating as we said the purpose of writing the poem and he vows faithfulness and loyalty thank you